Catherine, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, today will be a, a, it'll be a fun day to do a webinar uh, to introduce some new software, and this is uh, Seek Builder Pro. So as you know, Seek Builder is one of our core applications for sequence editing and annotation and does things like virtual cloning and primer design. And we've spent about the last eight months overhauling the program, and it will provide you with uh, really a nice new interface to work with. So today I just have a couple of slides just to introduce um, kind of the company. So Seek, you know, Seek Builder Pro is part of the molecular biology suite. Um, and it's one of the core applications. And DNA Star provides software in three areas, molecular biology and genomics and structural biology. And we look to provide solutions then across all the different um, um, areas. And, and Seek Builder really is a core application here. So it's really an important one to, um, uh, to, to address and make sure that it's, that it's meeting the needs of the customers. And so I've got a few screenshots here of Seek Builder Pro, and you can see you know, in, the, uh, in the upper left corner we have an annotation results um, window, and that's some new functionality that was actually added with version 14.1, so it's in the current software. And it's functionality that allows us to auto-annotate plasmids or even some larger sequences where it can query um, a sequence against the database of, of features and then pull those features back and allow the user to interrogate and look at the, the features that are, that are matching and then to accept them either in batch or individually. So it's a, a really nice piece of functionality. And we've covered that in some, some earlier webinars. Uh, as well as a cloning summary picture. And the cloning summary, again, is some of the new cloning wizards that were also added uh, in, in the version 14. And the cloning wizards then you know, support um, all different cloning methods, including um, multiple insert cloning methods, and it provides things like a history of the cloning and some graphics that show how the fragments have been cloned in, into the vector. So that's a whole other um, area of new development in Seek Builder. But it's this, a window, this the window to the right that we're going to focus on today. And that's really a whole new look and feel for this application. And it allows us to produce images that are, um, that are very crisp, um, that are formatted in a way that uh, is, is more useful and requires less user intervention to improve the views. And it's also a modern uh, interface that, again, allows us to highly customize the different views that we're using. And that's, that's where we'll spend most of today's webinar, is just exploring some of this new functionality and ways to set up the sequences and preserve different views and create new views. So that, that, that's really a... Uh, a main focus here. So kind of a list of the things that we'll cover is, is really focus on this new improved look and functionality, how configurable the interface is, and it's extremely flexible. Um, there's new ways to select enzymes that are, are much more efficient. Uh, we can do multiple feature selection and then perform actions on those features. Uh, we've, we've improved some of the primer design so that we can automatically name primers and they fit in more with this, this uh, new mode of, of creating primers and automatically creating features and, and just making it more streamlined for the users. And we have an edit seek layout mode. So we have uh, another program called edit seek that, that's been, you know, around for many, many years. And we have lots of people who prefer a simple layout and not as, not as complex. And so now there's an easy way to go back and forth between um, a more simple layout and, of course, the more complex and feature-rich layout in Seek Builder. And all these uh, views then are controlled um, through a mechanism that will allow us to have um, you know, an edit seek mode, a user defined mode, or uh, the default DNA star mode. And so at this point, uh, we'll just jump out of the PowerPoint and go into the software and take a look at, at Seek Builder Pro. And again, if you have questions, you know, I'll try to uh, cover everything that I can here. Um, and so let's open Seek Builder Pro with a new icon. And so when we open Seek Builder Pro, I'm going to maximize the window here. Uh, one of the first pieces of functionality is really to address what happens when we open novel sequences. So if I take a sequence that does not have formatting, uh, you know, Seek Builder formatting, but, you know, sequences that have, uh, that are coming from GenBank, you know, well, how do those look right out of the box? And so I'm going to go to Entree here and bring up a sequence. 
And this is a viral genome, so it's got lots of features. And we can save it there. And so this is opening a fresh sequence. And you'll notice if, you know, if you're a current user of SeqBuilder, um, it was sometimes a kind of uh, a surprise, you know, how exactly these different features would open. And it, it would require quite a bit of, of manipulation of these views to get them how you want it. And you'll notice that with this interface, we have a circular map, so we automatically recognize, you know, that it's, that it's circular. And we have a split window like we did before. We have a circular map on top and a feature list on the bottom. And, but you can see that it, it looks quite a bit different. We've got these tabs here. It says Circular Linear Sequence Primer Design. If you're familiar with our other applications like Megaline Pro or GenVision Pro, you'll know that these are the view, the view buttons. So as I select them, I can switch between the different views in the windows. So here's, again, I can toggle them. Um, the lower pane, likewise, I have a feature view, but I can go to a primer view or a comment or a mini-map or a site summary. So to control what's on the views, I just click the button. The buttons can also get reordered, so I can take the circular map and move it to the right. Or I can drag, click on a button, and this is functionality that might be a little bit more difficult just to discover, but if I select the sequence view, I'm going to left click and drag and move it down to the bottom window. So now I have a sequence view in the bottom and a circular map on top. So it's very customizable, so I can change these buttons. Of course, if I save the document, it will preserve that, that window state. Uh, and then I'll also show you some ways to preserve that so it's for all documents. So you can set a default then so that every time you open a new sequence that doesn't have this sort of information in it, uh, you don't have to you know, readjust everything. It'll just remember that that's your preferred state. But we'll, we'll do a few more things before we before we get there. Um, I can also um, say, well, I don't want a split window. You know, I just want one big window, and now it's just merged all the buttons at the bottom. And you can see, depending on what I'm working on, I may want the largest map that I can possibly get. Right? So now I have a very large circle. I can zoom in and out on it and use up most of my screen just for the map. So again, Depending on what your needs are, you can customize this view to, to, to really meet the need. And then I can add that split back. And I'm going to move my button over here. So the furthermost left button is the one that will show by default. You'll also notice in the far, on the far right, we also have the, uh, the side panel, which is a new piece of functionality. So the side panel has four different tabs. It has a Styles tab, and in the Styles tab, you can see kind of a, a regular expected uh, palette for features. We have line, color, and fill, and shadow, and then feature style information. So I have the different types of, of uh, shapes that we can apply to features, and where the label position is, and whether the label is attached or not. And then there's also a font controller here. And what's nice about the font controller is that it can work on a selected item or a group of items, so all features, all enzymes, or things like the circular title or ruler. So it's kind of a universal font controller that's placed here on the side panel. There's also an enzymes picker. So the enzyme picker is, just a, is a list, and I can, and I'll show you this in, in a little bit, but I'll, you, you can um, manually select enzymes or type them in. Um, there's also uh, a settings panel that has things like the circular map title and translations. Um, it's kind of a catch-all for different options that I might have for my views. And of course, a details panel. And the details panel has a link to watch videos related to Seek Builder Pro and also links to uh, different documents. And depending on what I'm selecting, if I select a feature, um, I get uh, uh, information about that particular feature will then show up in the details panel. So there's some other uh, different modes, different things can show up in the details panel. Now like the views, I can customize this. So if I want to move the tabs up in one spot, you know, I may want to have all the real estate for my enzyme picker or my style panel. Right? So you can, again, customize this view. I'm clicking on these tabs and dragging them into position. Uh, there's one more uh, piece of, of, of a, a window, it's really a toolbar here on the far left. 
So there's also a toolbar that's that's new for version 15, and the toolbar provides us with all different um, options. And we'll go through these in a bit once I switch the views. So the toolbar, again, I can make it float. I can detach it, reattach. Oh, maybe not with WebEx going. That might be one that. Let's see if I can. So I can move my toolbar and reposition. We'll go through what the different the different tabs do. So this the circular map then. Let's focus on that a little bit more. So the circular map, I can zoom in and out. So it's not static. So I can use that horizontal slider at the top to zoom in and out. So there's zooming out, zooming in. Uh, there's also um, zoom in magnification where I can select a region and zoom in, right? So it's a nice way to, you know, work with larger molecules if I want to focus in an area. Um, the features are also movable. And so you can see that we have some that are anchored on the plasmid or the, on, the, on the genome backbone. I can double click on them and reposition. So this interface really gives us great flexibility in manipulating these images now. Now, of course, I can do lots of, of you know, manual manipulation here. You might spend quite a bit of time moving features how you want them. Um, if you get to a point where uh, you just want to reset and say, well, I just did a whole bunch of stuff, uh, I want to go back to my starting point, there's something called recalculate display under the view option. And the recalculate display will just kind of rerun the algorithm. The algorithm also places enzyme labels. So you see they kind of shift and move. They're, they're an active, um, they actively move as we add enzymes. And so we can kind of reset that view by recalculating. There's also some capability, um, you know, when I, when I click here on features, it interacts with the feature list. So when I have a split view, an advantage to having split views is that when I select a feature, um, you can see in the feature list that that gene has been um, highlighted. And I can go to the feature list now and expand. And I'm just going to make the window expand up. And I can expand for the, the, the gene and see details about, about the gene. Um, there's also a, a checkbox here for the visibility. So I can make the feature visible from the feature list. Or I can select a feature in the map and use a context menu to hide or delete the feature. All right, so there's all different ways then that I can uh, manipulate this and make this, this view look exactly how I want it. Uh, so there's also a, a big piece of new functionality is multiple selection. And so I can select features. I can drag select. And you can see that that whole group of features now has been selected in the plasma map. I can also individually select by holding the control key down. You know, so it allows me to start to do things in batch to these features. So depending on what, maybe I want to make this map look quite a bit different. So one option might be, um, you know, we have this default that DNA star has provided, but maybe I don't want to see the genes and CDSs. I just want to see the CDSs as the primary feature. So one thing I could do is go into the feature table. I'm just going to select a row and right click. And you'll see it says select all features of this type. So now I've got all the gene features selected on the map, and I'm going to hide those. And now I can go to the CDSs and say, select all of these with type. And I can reposition them so they're mass selected. I'm left click, and I'm going to move them to my backbone. So I just altered the way that this image looked. And I say, well, I don't like the style either, so I'm going to select all of that type. And I'm going to go to the style panel on the right. And I'm going to say, well, let's pick a little more, a different color, and the shape I can change. Right? And I can detach labels if I want. You know, so now I've got a very different image that I'm looking at. And I can also resize this backbone if I click on it. You can see there's a lot of white space there. So I can make a very different looking image if I want, and you can see there's a little bit of, little bit of collision there. That's something that we're working to, 
improve a little bit more, so we'll see that get a little better. Um, to have an algorithm that detects that a little bit more. So I can make some little adjustments like that wherever it seems a little crowded. So there I have a map that looks a lot different from the default. Now I might say that I always want my sequences. So when I take, a, say, a new sequence from GenBank, if I always want it to look with this sort of a style, I can go under View and save this layout as a default. So now I can close it. And I'm not going to save this in any way. I'm just going to close the file and just reopen it. You know, fresh download again. So again, the idea is, you know, if you're if you're getting new sequences um, and you want them to look a certain way, um, you can create that default. Oh, I typed the wrong one in. Let's try that again. NC underscore. That looks better. And we'll save over that so you know it's a fresh sequence. And I get something that almost looks exactly the same. Um, one, the only difference here is that my backbone, I have to make one adjustment and I get the same sequence that I had before. And any little manual adjustment like that. I could still make. So it saves that kind of a kind of a default layout then. And and I can change that and I'll show you how we can manipulate that as well. So um, I can revert this now and say, well, I don't really, you know, I don't really like this. Let's go back, let's scrub this one away and restore the DNA star default. And what this does is it essentially deletes the file that saved that other default. Right, so I can say I don't really want that as a default. Let's go back to the DNA star default, and we're back to this position. So now I'm going to switch the view here. We'll go to a sequence view, and the sequence view has uh, more things to look at, say, than a circular map. I've got uh, more toolbar options now that are applicable. I can look at both strands. Um, those are um, enzymes, so I can apply selectors. In this case, I picked six cutters, so I'm applying a, a batch of enzyme selectors. There's a translation icon here that has uh, reading frames. I can show all the reading frames. You know, it can show all the ORFs. So I'm just going to try to. I'm going to turn everything on here. Uh, so I have ORFs on. I can make a partial translation now as well. Create a translation. translation. And when I do that, the settings panel, there's a little table here that has translations and a visibility check. So I can have multiple translations. Um, rulers, I can show all the rulers. So I'm just kind of turning vertical spacing. Um, the side panel, this is an icon that controls the side panel. So there's Everything essentially visible in the sequence view, and you know, and, and so different users again will have different preferences for for what they want. Uh, now I'm going to deconstruct this view, so I can also we have users again more in the edit seek line, and just to show you, I can turn all these things off very quickly. So it's a, a very so I can manually do this. No spacing. No window. We still have features there, so just select them and hide them. And we still have that little translation that I forgot to turn off. So, and there I turned off the translation. So now I got a view again for users that have used EditSeq in the past. That looks a lot more like an EditSeq view. It's as much sequence data as I can get in in a single view. And to make that easier, so again, I can I can switch this, you know, back to the DNA star layout. It'll kind of turn everything back on. There's also some view buttons here, and there's the compact edit seek layout button that will allow us just in one click to go back to this this simpler view. 
All right. And then there's also a button to go back to a default layout. Now, if I would have um, made some changes, I could save my own user default layout as well. So it's not, um, um, you know, but any time that you restore, you override that user default. So you can have a couple different default layouts that way. So that's uh, some of the controls then that we have in um, how we can control what a sequence looks like by default. Um, there's also some a lot of new work that was done in some of the other views. So certainly the circular map uh, has had a lot of work done. Um, the feature list, we'll make this a little bit bigger, also has a couple different states. Um, if, you, if you've used Seek Builder before, you know that it had an expanded feature list. This feature list can control what's visible. Right again, so I can turn things on or off, and it'll turn them on or off the visibility in all the different views. And let me just go up here to the top. There's expandy uh, icons here, so I can expand the different features and see the contents and the information. Uh, these are editable fields, so if I need to change the feature type, I can select right on the word gene and change the type of that feature by selecting, you know, one of these other. And then there will be a, def a default style. It's right up here for that feature. Now it's an Exxon feature. I can add um, new notes and type in here. I can also right-click, delete, or rename the feature. And renaming the feature creates a title field that we can rename. So again, really nice uh, functionality here. If I right click here, I can expand all of them. And you see on a bigger sequence like this, it, the table gets quite large, or I can collapse all of them. Um, they're fully sortable, so I can sort by type. All right, so again, if I want to do something to all the CDSs, I can do that, and then just go up to the style panel right, and make my change my fill to a different color. And of course I have ind you know independent I can select a feature change the fill and customize a single feature. So back to the feature table so I can I can rename um, change the qualifiers um, sort by position, fully sortable. Um, so it's really a, a nice way to um, manage the features. I can also create new features. So I'll just select a region here and do a feature, new feature. And you'll see that it will expand and automatically create um, a field here that I can type in. And again, I can define what the feature is. And so here's the new feature. It inherits that styling that I had applied. Like that. So it adds it to the table. So again, um, very, very easy to use. So feature table has been streamlined. It's collapsible, sortable, uh, multiple selection the feature table. And then I can apply things to those multiple selections. You know, again, I can delete features. All right, and then when I select multiple features, I see a details panel that updates um, in the, at, at the right as well to see how many features I have um, selected. So the feature table is new. Um, we're going to go to, I'm going to switch to a linear map now. And again, we can see the linear map is, um, we have, a zoom slider at the top, so I can zoom in and out. Um, I can still do the page layout, you know, so some people prefer to have a couple groups per page. Sometimes that's easier to work with certain types of sequences. Um, so if I want to make PCR primers, I select a region that I want to amplify, create primer pairs, um, choose primers that end exactly or optimal. So I'm just going to do, and this is the same dialog that we had before. 
um, stay within, say, 100 base pairs, and, and of course I can set conditions. And, and so when I do that, it automatically switches to the primer design view, and we get um, an updated primer list as well. So a couple new things with, with the primer design. Um, we get the new view states, and we get a primer table now that also has expandability. And you can see there's some auto naming. So I've got one set of, of three primers, pair one, two, three. We have names. I can rename the primer. And you can see in the view forward one primer is there. All right, so there's some um, auto naming. So now if I make multiple sets, Now we have set two, so set one, set two, and of course the name of the primer, S2 for set two. And so I can get um, uh, some, some auto naming functionality. And of course these are preserved in um, their, their features, so you, they show up you know, in the linear map as features, so I can see them. Um, there's an active column and a show column, so I don't have to show all of them. So there's just one pair, the active pair, is the one that is in, so there's a column active, and that's the pair that we can work on in the primer list view. And so if I'm actively working on uh, a primer, um, this is how I'd control it. And so of course the primer, this view allows me to extend and, and really tweak the primer. And you can see as I do that, the primer list updates immediately with the new primer sequence. I'll expand that. You can see that it changes that primer sequence. All right, I can do things like introduce. And this is all, again, existing functionality. Introduce enzymes, you know, that don't cut the product. So I can show all the enzymes and introduce new enzyme sites. Um, and so forth, upper primer, lower primer. So a little bit of some changes to, to again, to both of these views. Uh, there's also a way to, to, to pick enzymes. And so as long as we have enzymes there, I'm going to um, go back to um, we'll turn off the enzymes. And you can see, I'll go to a circular map now. And so I have a list of selectors, so I can do things like unique sites or six cutters. And then the picker has a smart filter at the top. So actually, let's clear these out. So if I want to apply Echo R1, I type in ECO, and I can apply Echo. And if I want DAM, oops. So if you have just a sub-selection, this allows me to very quickly find those enzymes, right? And so there's a subset that, that I'm interested in. And if I clear the picker, I can see that they are selected in that view. So it's a really handy way to either apply batches of, of selectors um, or individually selected. So it's much improved over the previous versions that required a lot of kind of like expansions of side folders and, and so forth. So I can very quickly create a set like that. Um, in, in terms of handling the enzymes, we do have the ability to make new ones. And this is, again, functionality that is unchanged from the previous version. Um, there's new enzymes. I can manage the enzymes, you know, create new ones, make new selectors out of selected enzymes. So I can ex customize that list of, of the selectors that are available um, or use this this new picker. So at this point, we're getting close to our, our, our end here. And, and so all the changes that I've made now, of course, if I save this as a Seek Builder document, and so all these customized changes, the primers that I designed, the, the feature style changes, the enzymes, the view states and positions of the windows, those will all get preserved inside the Seek Builder document. And so those are, are particular to each document. So when I open it, it will look like this. 
And again, that's a distinction. When I open a new sequence, it's unformatted with color features in the window, the windows, uh, the window states. Um, that's where our layouts then control um, how those look. So with that, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up, and I'd be more than happy to answer any any questions that come up. Hi, Matt. Uh, we have two questions that have come in from our attendees today. And the first question is, is it possible to create additional layout files? Uh, yes, yes. It, I, didn't, I didn't show that in detail, but um, if, if uh, we have additional ways to save layout. So if we go back to this view menu, um, I can have more than just the default and the DNA star default. I can also save extra layouts as a template. So you could potentially have, you know, maybe a special layout for sequence view. And I could save that. And then if I did want to apply it, I could go back and apply that layout and locate that file. So there is some added, and, and some of our long-term customers are familiar with this functionality. So there is that flexibility to create more layouts than what we automatically provide with you. Thank you for that. Um, we have another question about can you open old <coughs> old Seek Builder files? And I have a related question that just came in uh, a few minutes ago that I think I'll just go ahead and pose with this, which is, uh, is Seek Builder Pro the same thing as Seek Builder? And then the related question, can you open those old Seek Builder files with it? Yes, yeah, yeah, very good question. So if, if you're... Yeah, uh, a long time user and you've got lots of seek builder files uh, yes it has the same underpinnings as the as the previous version so you can open the older files uh, and I can just show you so I'll go into uh, demo data here and let's see I think this here's a PBR 322 seek builder from 2009 and so it will open, and it can read the stylings. It might not get the exact window sizes that were preserved because, because that changed so much between the versions. Um, but you can see that we get um, some of the features turned on. And I'll just turn them all on so you can just kind of see. So there's a file, a SQLer file from 2009. So yeah, I can it reinterpret and read and give you the same stylings that you had. The windows might be slightly different, but that, that should be the only only difference that, that you notice. And so as a kind of corollary to that, is Seek Builder Pro the same thing as Seek Builder? Like why does it have a different name? Uh, no, it's it's got a it's it's not the same. It's got a uh, the, the new version of Seek Builder has a completely different framework. Um, for the GUI, so that's all of that is is new. So, so that part is new, and some of the data handling itself is new. So it it is it is an update. It is not a completely new program. Uh, again, the underpinnings they share the same uh, underpinnings, but yeah, all the all the GUI layering is completely different. 